Why? Because God makes no mistakes. Amen? He is a perfect God and He always does that which is good. So we are going to uh, right ahead to our message. I would like to ask everybody to stand up. We have read our uh, text already in Mark chapter 14, 1 to 9. So we will go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we are so thankful for once again gathering us and giving us an opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray, Lord, that you will forgive us of our sins and make us worthy because we have to be the right vessel of the truths, Lord, that we are going to encounter today from your word. And that the Holy Spirit will help us understand it and give us enough grace so that, Lord, this can be appropriated in our lives so that everything that we study from your word will be translated into our daily living. Forgive us, O oh God, because so many times we disappoint you. We hurt you, O oh God. But we thank you because you are faithful in forgiving us. And despite of all the things that we have done against you, despite of all the things, the good things that you have done for us, most of the time we still have the audacity to do things that are contrary to your will. But forgive us, O oh God, because our spirit, spirit is willing, but our flesh is really weak. So I pray, Lord, that you will continue to hold us, that we may be able to walk and move forward. And as we do that, O oh God, we'll be able, Lord, to serve you and to glorify your name, even though, Lord, we are not worthy of all the blessings that you're giving our way. I just pray, Lord, that today will be an encouragement to us to serve you more in our lives, and that we will do things, Lord, for the glory of your name, and that is only for you alone. I pray, Lord, that you will help us understand what motivation we should have as we serve you. We thank you, Lord. Be our guide today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. So I'm going to preach today about the story, the true story that we have read regarding a woman who did things in order to glorify God in her life. If we're going to read through Mark chapter 14, 1 to 9, and we will read it several times, then we will, not be all, we will not only be informed of the things that we can see there, and we will not only be captivated by this beautiful story written in the Bible, but it will also impress unto us some lessons that we need to understand as we serve God in our lives. There are certain words that we should partake take notice and uh, let us please look in verse number 8 Mark 14 verse number 8 when the Bible says she had done what she could she is come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying let us notice the word she had done what she could so that is something that is a very commendable regarding this woman because she did everything in her power by the grace of God, in order to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord commended her for what he had done, and that actually is the centerpiece of what we are going to study this morning, regarding that incident that happened in the house of uh, Simon. So there are two great elements that are contained here. First, we should see the element of worship. Worship is our highest occupation to God. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that the Father is looking for such to worship Him. People that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. People who knew the truth and people who received the spirit because of believing in the truth. Without the truth, there can be no, no imparting of the Holy Spirit because only the truth can set us free. The Bible says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Before we are not free to worship God, because our flesh keeps getting in the way. Before we do not even want to worship God, because we are imprisoned by uh, the God of this world, which is Satan, 
and we are like a puppet doing things according to his wishes we are being played by the lust of, of, of this world the lust of uh, the, the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life this is the motivation that is being given unto us as we live in this world we think that these are the only things that can make us happy and these are the only things that can make us satisfied but if we're going to look at the life of uh, Solomon, even though he pursued so many things in life, he saw that everything is vanity under the sun because only Jesus can satisfy our soul. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, there is going to be a big gaping hole in our hearts that no matter what we do, can never be filled. Because that hole is in the... Uh, uh, the, the thing or the person that can only patch that hole is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ the Bible says what shall it profit a man even if he gained the whole world and suffered the loss of his own soul or what can a man give in exchange for his soul there is nothing that satisfies except the Lord Jesus Christ so we can see that once we got saved what we need to do is to always worship God in our lives amen that's why we come to church to worship. We do, not want, we do not come to church to gossip. We do not come to church to quarrel. We do not come to church to be suspicious of one another. We do not come to church in order to become worse than before. We come to church in order to fellowship. We come to church in order to feast with the word of God. We come to church in order to pray to the Lord. And we come to church so that we can worship God in spirit and in truth. And that is the highest occupation of a Christian. People get saved, and when they got saved, the first thing that they need to do is to worship God. And when we worship God, it should follow that we serve Him. Because as we worship, we are going to be filled with Christ, and as we are filled with Christ, then He must be exemplified in our lives. He should be seen in our lives. lives. He should flow out in our lives we should let the love of god flow through us because that love was shed abroad in our hearts when we received the lord jesus christ as our lord and as our savior so these are the two things that will uh, occupy us as we study this particular incident through worship we give something to the lord and through service we do something for the Lord so again through worship we give something to God and that is his glory and through service we do something for the Lord and the, re and, and the reason for it is so that we can still glorify him so both these privileges blend together in the action that Mary showed in this particular passage remember I mentioned that worship and service is a privilege it is not a duty when we make worship and service a duty then there is an element of force in doing that but when we see worship and service as a privilege then there is the element of free will in doing it because we have to seize all the opportunity and the privileges that God is affording us so that in our life and and as weak as we are and as sinful as we are even though we are sinners saved by grace but praise God we can do something in order to worship God and we can do something in order to serve God in our lives amen, amen. and that is always a privilege so we can see that their worship is seen in verse number three can we go there uh, Milka in verse number three when the Bible says and being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper as he sat at meat there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard very precious and she break the box and poured it on his head that is her act of worship she did something for the Lord Jesus Christ and for the Lord Jesus Christ alone amen so that is how we worship God we come here for Jesus and we worship God alone we are not here to impress people we are not here to to uh, make ourselves known we are not here to gain any following 
But we are here because we want to lift up and to honor the one who died for us on the cross of Calvary so that we can reminisce on all of the things that he had done. And then our spirit will be lifted up in awe because of the greatness of the action of Jesus when he died on the cross of Calvary. So that is loving him. That is expressing our gratitude to him. And that is giving the highest praise and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. So this woman expresses her love to the Lord in a very wonderful way. And her service is seen in verse number 6 and 8. So he broke that spike nard for the Lord. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. You see, if you are doing something for Jesus, do not listen to other people. Amen. They may discourage you. They may say something against you. But as long as you know that you are doing it for Jesus, it doesn't matter what people may say. It doesn't matter if they will look down at you. It doesn't even matter if they will say that you're crazy. Actually, the people thought uh, here that she was a crazy woman because a bottle of spike nard, the Bible says, is very precious. And usually a woman will save for her lifetime so that she can have that for her burial. But instead of using it for her, he used it for the Lord, Jesus Christ. And that is her act of worship to the Lord. So as we look at this, there are several things that we are going to define so that we can see that, that the privilege of Christian service has a permanent value in the estimation of God. You see, when you serve to impress people, you will forever be disappointed. But when you serve for God and for God alone, you will be forever satisfied by the grace of God. Number one, let us look at the meaning of service. Let us look at the meaning of service. What do we mean when we as believers talk about serving the Lord? You see, sometimes our definition is very limited. Because when we say that we are serving God, we think of being a minister, being a pastor, being a Sunday school teacher, being a uh, member of the choir, being a preacher, being a, uh, a teacher in an outreach, or being a full-time worker inside the church, or doing things in the church constitute uh, serving the Lord. But the truth of the matter is that Christian service is so broad that wherever you are, you can serve God. You see, in this incident, they were in the house of Simon the leper, and she came in, and she did something for the Lord Jesus Christ, and what he did, Jesus says, she had wrought for me. Meaning to say, anything that we do for Jesus is Christian service. You can give a, uh, a glass of cold water in the name of Jesus, and it is Christian service. You can help a lady cross the street, for the Lord Jesus Christ, that is Christian service. Anything that we do in lieu of the Lord Jesus Christ constitute what we call Christian service. Why? Because the Bible says, we are His workmanship created unto good works. Every good works that we are doing with the purpose of glorifying God is what we call Christian service. So you teachers, you can serve God by teaching your students well. You can serve God by sharing to them even in, in, in what way you can, by the grace of God, the word of God. You can serve God if you're feeding the, the poor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you do, as long as it is done for the name of Jesus, this constitutes what we call Christian service. But the more important thing and the qualifying word is it is doing things for the Lord Jesus Christ. You may do, you may preach, but if you are going to preach in order to make people uh, applaud at you, that is not even Christian service. That is self-service. If you will do anything so that you will be lifted up, you are not serving God. You may use the name of Jesus. You may preach the name of Jesus. You may preach the gospel of Jesus. You may open the word of Jesus. You may teach the lessons of Jesus. But if your motivation is yourself, if your motivation is money, that is not Christian service. 
Christian service is simply doing things for the Lord Jesus Christ. So whatever it is, are you doing it for Jesus? If you are doing it for Jesus, then you are serving the Lord. Amen? Number two, the measure of Christian service. How do we measure our service to the Lord? How much are we to do for Him? You see, our Lord only expects us to do what lies in our own power. Yes, I know that the Bible says, without me, you can do nothing. That is what the Lord Jesus Christ says. But then again, He has given us some abilities, some gifts, and those gifts that were given us is in our power. And what God is actually asking us to do is to do only those things that we can do. He will not ask us beyond things that we cannot do. So that's why you may say that, but pastor, I can only serve God in a very limited way. The question is this, have you given your all to Jesus? Have you given everything that you could? Have you done everything that you could for the Lord Jesus Christ? Then if you have done everything, so you gave Him 100%, so it doesn't matter how much, how little it is. Because you have done everything for God, God will appreciate that. And God is going to accept that. Remember what the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. So it follows to what? Things are given to you are the only things that are required of you. You see, sometimes you may lack education, so you cannot be, shall we say, uh, do things in, an, in a way that an educated person can do, but you can do things that will glorify God. So however you do those things, as long as they are done for the Lord Jesus Christ, then that is only what is required of you, of the Lord. You see, when I was in the Philippines, you have a member there, Brother Lito, the one who, le who invited me to attend the church. He was a special person. He does not really know how to read. He does not really know. Well, he can write some, but he really cannot uh, read. And then there are some uh, uh, infirmities in him, but at least he can invite. And whenever there is an opportunity, he will always invite people to the church. And by the grace of God, he was able to invite me and that caused my salvation. Why? Because that day, he had done everything that he could for the Lord, Jesus Christ. You see, sometimes we keep count. No, you don't do that. What you must keep count is what, not the amount of the things that you have done, but the quality of the things that we have done for the Lord Jesus Christ. So many people can produce uh, so many works, but sometimes the quality is not good. Remember, at the judgment seat of Christ, there are two kinds of materials. The wood and stubble, and they are materials that will be burned by fire. Uh, gold, silver, and precious stones, and this will be refined by fire. So it doesn't matter how much work, you present to the Lord Jesus Christ what's important is how much will remain after they are tried by fire. And that should be the quality of our service to the Lord. There was this person who said that, well, I have done so much for God. And he brought what he has done in, the, in front of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the Lord Jesus Christ analyzed everything that he had done. And God says, Panatisism, 10%. Personal ambition, 23%. Love of praise, 19%. Pride of denomination, 15%. Pride of talents, 14%. Love of authority and power, 12%. Pure seal to God, 4%. And pure seal for man, 3%. So everything, uh, all in all, he only had done 7% of quality works in the sight. Of God. So it is not just work, 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 but working for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That is the measure of our service to the Lord. Because you see, if you cannot sing, God will not ask you to sing. That's why if you know that you cannot sing, just sing in the congregation. Do not try to sing solo. Because if you will sing solo, maybe after you sang, 
you will be solo in the church. I remember Brother Edwin. Whenever he sings, he will close his eyes from the beginning until the end of the song. During that time, I'm still uh, quite uh, naughty, even as a pastor. So while he was singing, I signaled to the people that we will go out the back door. So that after he sang, when he opened his eyes, he will see nobody inside the church. And he will think that the rapture occurred while he was singing. And then we are all on the side of the church looking at him. And then after he sang, and he was surprised that nobody was there. And he's about to run. When we say, Brother Edwin, we were here. And he got a little bit offended because of that. But after that, whenever he sings, he see to it that one eye is open. <laughs> so that he will see if we will stay or if we will not stay in the church. But, but whatever God has given you, he expects you to use for his glory. That's why if you have a talent in art, use it to beautify the building of the church. If you have talent uh, in singing, use your voice. For the glory of God. If you have talent in dancing, lose it. <laughs> Don't use it. <laughs> Only use those things that God has given you and that will really glorify God in your life. Amen. Remember that the scope of our service is unlimited. You, you can open your house for a Bible study. You can invite people to have lunch or dinner, or breakfast, and then have a sharing of the Word of God. You can invite me at Burger King, and we can fellowship for the Lord. Much better if you will invite me for a brunch at Kema. And we will really talk about all the doctrines that you need, you want to understand. But then again, in the sight of God, our motive is food, and that is not right. Amen? But we can always do things in order to serve the Lord. If you have money, you can use that money in order to serve God. If you have talent, you can use that talent in order... When I was in the Philippines, I'm teaching our, our, uh, our teachers or members that have talent, use your talent in order to help people know about the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Danny, the pastor now of uh, Sister in Nagpakasal, Jonalyn, he has a talent in music. He can play the, the keyboard. I told Brother Danny, Brother Danny, if there is a, a people who want to learn how to play the piano or the keyboard, you offer your service for free. You bring him to church. Bring them to the church. Teach them. And while teaching them, you share to them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So by sharing your talent, you can uh, serve the Lord. I, I told our people, if you receive your salary and you have uh, a neighbor who is very poor who cannot even afford Jollibee or McDonald's why don't you ask them to, to go out for, for a, a lunch or a dinner but first invite them to the church so that they can hear the word of God and then reward them with a lunch or a dinner so by using your money you will be able to serve God if you will just be creative you can find ways in order to serve the Lord. Amen? Because serving God, the scope is unlimited. Number three, the motive of Christian service. The motive of Christian service. What was the motive of Mary? Why did she worship the Lord like this and express her appreciation of Him in such a loving service? Did she do it to get prominence? You see, some people are serving God to become prominent. They want to be preeminent in the church. Where the Bible says, in all things, the Lord Jesus Christ must have the preeminence. That is why we can see, sad to say, pastors now in churches wherein they are acting as lords over God's heritage. While the Bible says that we should feed the flock of God, we should oversee, but there is no way that we must abuse the authority because the final authority is always God and His Word. And we must always be under or subjected to the Word of God. Some people will do things to become prominent. Again, I've given this as an example so many times, but I will do it again. Uh, we have a uh, co-Bible student in the Philippines, uh, a lady. She got saved while she was uh, a senior in a nightclub. And then she got saved. 
she surrendered her life to the Lord. And she had really a, a great talent when it comes to music. She can really sing very, very well. But then it has gotten to her head. And one day, I believe it was a big day in our church, and he was asked to give the special number, because usually when you sing well, you will be given the privilege to give a special number in uh, what we call special events. And then she approached me and she said, Brother Joel, listen, when I will sing later, people will have goosebumps because of the way that I'm going to sing this song. And as I told you, when I was a new pastor, I was quite uh, naughty. I told her, well, if we will all have goosebumps, uh, be careful because we only have one toilet here in our church. And we will not be enough for that. And then she sang. She really sang very well. And maybe people really had goosebumps because of the way she sang. But you know, that was the last song that she sang for the Lord. Why? God will never give you his glory. The Lord took away her voice after that. Why? Because her motive is for self and not for the Lord. So the question here is this. Why are we going to serve God and use God for our own benefit? Can we shortchange God? Remember the Bible says God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You see, I do not understand why we people will even try to deceive God. Can you let that sink in? In our limited mind? Why do we even try to deceive God? Or why we do, do believe that we can deceive God? God knows everything. There is nothing that we can hide from God. So that the only way that we can do before God is to be humble, is to accept that we are sinners, that even though we are saved, Sometimes we are still a prisoner of sin and we need to bow down in front of God and to kneel down and to cry out and ask, God, forgive me and help me that I may be able to overcome this thing in my life. That's the only thing that we can do. We cannot be boastful before God. We cannot boast of anything because everything that were done by the grace of God is only through the Lord, Jesus Christ. So did she do it to get prominence? Did she do it to be seen by other people? Actually, the truth of the matter, if that is her motive, it actually backfired. Because people look at her and even uh, murmured against her because they said what she did is foolish because if she just sold that bottle of spike nard, he can feed so many poor people. You see, sometimes... We exchange Christian service with social service. We cannot do that. Yes, social service is a good work. But, but Christian service is the highest kind of work. And that is the kind of work that we must do. You see, these people were rebuked by the Lord Jesus Christ. He told them, don't you know that you will have the poor always with you? And whenever you want, you can always do something for the poor. But me, he said, you do not always have. Because he has a limited time here on earth, three and a half years. And he said, what she has done, she did it for me. And what she had done will never be forgotten. So remember, we are doing so many things in life that will just be forgotten. We are doing so many things in, in life that will just be burned out at the judgment seat of Christ. But Jesus is giving us an assurance that whatever we have done for him, however small it is, it will never be forgotten. Amen? It will be appreciated by God and will always be in the mind of God. So what is our motive in serving God? Why do I preach? What is my motive? Why do you preach? What is your motive? Why do you give? What is your motive? When you give, do you want people to know how much you're giving? You see, it's so crazy that when you give little, you do not want people to see it. 
But when you give much, you want all the world to notice your giving. So, if that is our attitude, then we are giving for ourselves. We are not giving for the glory of God. You see, whatever we do, put this in mind. God knows our motive. And our motive is the one that is acceptable or unacceptable with the Lord. Sometimes it is not what we are actually doing. It is our motive in doing those things. Let, let, let me give you an example. Do you remember Moses? Moses, God told Moses that he's going to save or free uh, Israel from, from their captivity from Egypt. And then Moses immediately went to work in his own power and might when he saw an Egypt, Egyptian trying to hurt an Israelite, he killed the Egyptian in order to help the Israelite. Moses did it in his own power, in his own motivation, and in his own understanding. What happened? Even that the Jew that he helped turned against him, he was given to the authorities, and he was ostracized. He was not killed because he has a position in Egypt. And what happened is that he spent 40 years of being a nobody in the backside of the desert. Why? Because God is more interested in who we are than in what we do. Because if we are right, we will do what is right. If we are not right, no matter what right we do, it is not right in the sight of God. Because our, our self will always rear its ugly head whenever we do things for God uh, pretending that we are doing it for the Lord, but actually getting the glory for ourselves. Like for example, you know, as a preacher, it's very hard. I, I remember when I was a, a new preacher. When you're a new preacher, you want to impress the people that you're preaching to. And when, when, after every preaching, when nobody will appreciate the preaching, you feel sad. You, you feel disappointed. Why? Because you want people to say, what a great preaching, what a great message, etc., etc. That's what you're waiting for. And if they tell you, my brother, you, you preach a good preaching, and then you will feel that your ears are clapping. And that you, you, you really are motivated to do it again. Why? Because of yourself. But if not, then you're going to be disappointed. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter if people will appreciate or not. It doesn't matter if people will clap or not. It doesn't matter if people will like it or not. What matters is that God will be pleased in what we are doing because we are doing it for Him. It should be our motive. Whenever we preach, we should glorify God. Whenever we sing, we should glorify God. Whenever we give, we must glorify God. No matter what we do, we must glorify God. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all for the glory of God. So this should be our motive. And then, number four, the memorial of Christian service. Actually, this is our last point. This is a very unusual day that I will be preaching for a very, very short time. And because this is the last Sunday of the month, I wanted to end uh, this year with you thinking that there is still a chance <laughs> that our pastor will preach short messages in the coming year. And then I will enjoy dashing your hope on the first Sunday of January. <laughs> the memorial of Christian service. Listen, Mary's simple act of service done for Jesus' sake would never be forgotten. It was written in the Bible and the Bible says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away and if the word of God will not pass away everything that the, every time that the word of God is preached what Mary did will always be 
mentioned. Amen? So, you do not even, sometimes we do not even realize that whatever we do, don't you know that God has a book of memorials? That in heaven He will open books and one of them are the books of works and everything that we have done are written in that book. So whatever you did for Jesus, no matter how small it is, will always be in the memory of God. And He will never forget that. That's why this privilege is one of the greatest privileges afforded only the children of God. And that is why we have to, to really cease this privilege, to really cease every opportunity that God is allowing to come our way and use it for His glory. Use it to worship Him. Use it in order for us to serve the Lord. Because these are, this is the kind of service that will last forever. The kind of service that will never be forgotten. As I've said a while ago, we are wasting so much of our time doing things that only will last for a lifetime. But when we do something for the Lord Jesus Christ, these are the things that will last all throughout eternity. And it will never be forgotten. This tells us that every little act, no matter how insignificant it may be in the eyes of people. You see, this is our main problem. We always co consider what, what will people say. It doesn't matter. What's important is, what will Jesus say? Will people be pleased? You cannot please everybody. You cannot do that. But the question is, will Jesus be pleased? Because if you please Jesus, it doesn't matter if they are not, even all of them will not be pleased. Because we are going to give an account to Jesus and not to them. That is why, whatever we do, let us do it thinking of eternity, not only for a lifetime. Everything that we have done must be in view of eternity. Let me end in this uh, short illustration. If you will go to Manila, there is a place there that you call Luneta. Have you been there? Well, uh, if you have been there, you went on a date. <laughs> Most often than not, that is where people with no money, couple with no money will usually go and uh, have a you know, date. Actually, me and Sister Maribel, we went there one time and the Lord uh, chastised us because of doing that. But if we will go to, Lina to Manila, there is a, the place called Luneta and there is a monument there. And we call that the Rizal Monument. If you will look up, you will see in that column the statue of Jose Rizal, and, the, and it is a memorial of everything that he had done for his country called the Philippines. He fought for the freedom of that country. He showed to the world that pen is mightier than the sword. He laid down his life so that our beloved country, the Philippines, will gain her independence. So whenever you look there, it is a memorial of what Jose Rizal did, who gave his life and died in 1899 or 1960, if I'm not mistaken, in Bagumbayan, now known as Jose Rizal. You see, when we get to heaven, we will see so many monuments there. We can see the monument of Noah. It may not be a, a pillar, a monument or something, but we can see there the works that Noah did for the Lord Jesus Christ. We can see there the monument of the work of Abraham. And all of those people that are written in Hebrews chapter 11 because of their exploits of faith. But not only those people in the Bible. But we can see even other Christians who wrote something for the glory of God. I cannot imagine seeing the works that Pastor Lamberto Mercado had done. My, my former pastor is now with the Lord. That he had given his life even at the expense of his own family, just wanting to teach his uh, 
Bible students ask during the time? The Word of God. Spending five, six, seven hours every Saturday teaching us and sharing to us the Word of God. People may say, he's wasting time. Why speak for five, six, or seven hours when you can do it in 30 minutes or an hour? Well, I do not know. But he said, I want you to know everything that God has given me. Because once I leave this world, I want to see to it that I was able to give to faithful men what God had given me. And he did that. And we appreciated that. And we learned so many things because of that. So many people does not appreciate it, but I know in heaven, God appreciated what he did. Ladies and gentlemen, why don't we build a monument in heaven? I'm not talking about idolatry. I'm not talking about graven images. But I'm talking about a monument of work that is going to be a memorial for us. All of us saints are just pilgrims and strangers in this world. We are merely passing through. There is a destination that we are going to. It is a city not built with hand. It is a city built in heaven, none other by the Lord Jesus Christ. And once we get there, I hope and I pray that we are going to see the monuments of our work. They may be people that were one for the Lord Jesus Christ because of our evangelistic fervor or effort that we have done. They may be people who should have turned their backs on the Lord, but God has used us in order to encourage them so that they will continue serving God. And now they will be receiving reward for everything that they have done for the Lord. So let us always think of eternity in everything that we are doing here on earth because life here on earth is only a rehearsal for what will happen when we all get to heaven. Let us end in Daniel chapter 12 and verse number 3. And we will close in prayer after this. Daniel 12, 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. And this can be our memorial. You see, here in this earth, we will let the Lord Jesus Christ shine. But when we get to heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ will cause us to shine. For only He can give the glory that will be rightfully ours. And even as God give that glory to us, we will still remove that glory from us and give it back to Him. And we'll tell him, you alone God, you alone Jesus is worthy of all honor and of all glory. I hope and I pray that we can do this. And as we end this year, let us put in our hearts and in our mind that there is another year. And in this coming year, I will do more for the glory of God. Shall we stand up, please? Every head's bowed.